Staphines, their children too. And their children forever true. Ah! Oh. God. Must have drifted off there for a minute. Hey there. Welcome back to... Bloodborne. Odin Chapel looks a little different than it usually does. I don't know if I like this. Let's try and think of what happened at the end of the last episode. The doll said... A little prayer for us. We defeated the one reborn. And then what? I don't know where we are. I don't know how we got here. But boy do I feel tired. Welcome to the hunter's nightmare everybody. This ain't Cathedral Ward how you remember it, that's for sure. Some things have changed. And maybe not for the best. Welcome to the DLC for Bloodborne. The Old Hunters. It's fantastic. It's one of the best DLCs I've seen released for a video game. Souls game DLCs are always wonderful. Excellent. Full of quality. New items, new stuff to see, new story to tell. And a hell of a lot of difficulty. And so with that, let me introduce you to the the first pain in the ass. <laughs> We're starting things off right with uh, enemy hunters. Thankfully, they are weak to elements, so the Tenacious is making pretty short work of them. But, uh, yeah. As the title implies, the hunter's nightmare is full of hunters who have gone insane, blood-drunk crazy. You may remember that very early on in the Let's Play, right after we gained access to Cathedral Ward, I believe, uh, I picked up an item that was a little, uh, a little scrump scrumpled up eyeball. The eye of a blood-drunk hunter. Well, at any point during the game, after you pick that item up, you can go to the amygdala that's hanging out outside of Cathedral Ward, which I showed off in the previous episode or so. And he'll grab you. And he'll take you to the DLC. But, um... Here's the thing. You might have noticed that the enemies here have thousands of health and do hundreds of damage with every hit. You can go here as early as defeating Vicar Amelia. Which requires, you know, turning the game to nighttime, which will make the amygdala take you to the DLC. But it's not a great idea to do that. <laughs> it's not the best idea. So welcome to the Old Hunters, everybody. Uh, we're gonna pick up a lot of fun stuff. We're gonna see a lot of fun stuff in this episode, hence the length. <laughs> This is probably, I think this is the longest episode yet, because there's a lot of ground to cover, especially since I'm just walking around here. I really like that Cathedral Ward is mostly the same, except for the various additions that have been caused by this, um, by this nightmare plane we've entered. Like these beast guys. These are the beasts from, uh, Old Yarnum. Except now they're afraid of us. Which, to be fair, with the other hunters running around, I think they have a right to be a little bit nervous in our presence. Granted, I'm not, uh, I'm not swinging around a giant slab of rock like a whip cane thing like this gentleman over here is about to do. But, uh... Maybe someday we will. So yeah, the old yarn and beasts, they're, they're basically the same as they were. They're, they're still, uh, they're still cowards, but, uh, you know what? 
I appreciate their attempts to be sneaky. Oh, that guy doesn't have the, uh, that guy doesn't have the, um, the, the big club. This guy has one of my favorite weapons in the game, which we will see a little bit later. But, uh, from the way he's swinging it around, I think you get the gist of it already. Yes, the old Hunters includes, I think, like, eight or nine new weapons. There are a lot of new weapons in the DLC, so, uh, there are gonna be a lot of weapon demos in the coming episodes. There are four, there are four weapon demos in this episode. Oh, it's nuts. But yeah, these insane blood drunk hunter enemies are a nightmare, which is appropriate given, you know, where we found them. Believe me, if it weren't for the Tenitris, I wouldn't even be trying to fight these guys, because they... It's just not worth it. But they do drop pretty good blood gems, and pretty good souls, at least. Soul blood echoes. So, like, if you can be bothered to fight them instead of running past, you get pretty okay rewards for doing so. But overall, it's really not worth the investment in blood vials. Ugh, I don't know if I like this weird stone. It's, it's like a weird combination of stone and, like, threaded wood. It's very strange. And oh no, dogs! And they're different dogs than before. These are like Nightmare Doberman dogs. I don't like them. I don't like them. They're not even... I don't even know... I don't think those even appear in the main game. Like, some of these enemies do. Like, not the hunters, obviously. But some of the enemies do appear in the main game, and I don't think those guys do ever. Something that's kind of fun that I appreciated the first time I played this, that maybe you'll appreciate too, is trying to trying to figure out where everything is, because Cathedral Ward here is mostly the same. It's got a couple of alterations that maybe we'll see in a little bit, but it's it's mostly the same layout-wise. So it's kind of fun to see, like, oh, this is the stairs leading up to the Grand Cathedral. Uh, that's the courtyard that, that leads over to the Forbidden Woods, you know? That kind of stuff. There's a guy over there that has a, uh, a new gun as well. He's, he's got a new gun and a new weapon. There are also, like, f I think five new left-hand items. Oh, this guy's weapon is my favorite. Oh, God, I can't wait until I get my hands on that. And speaking of getting my hands on it, uh, that specific, uh, um... Th that specific type of hunter is weak to being parried, which is good, because he's got a pretty slow weapon. So, G generally speaking, in this game, in, in just overall, parrying is pretty much the best way to deal with, like, enemies that have a lot of health. Because it takes out a big chunk of their health at once. Hey, there it is. It's the Beast Cutter. The, uh, the first of many, many weapons we'll be picking up on our journey. It's basically the strength version of the Threaded Cane. And uh, there will be a weapon demo on it, but I am putting it last because uh, we, we are going through all of the weapons we picked up in this episode together in one bonus feature. So uh, look forward to that at the end of the episode. Grand Cathedral looks mostly the same. It's not, it's not changed too much. No, no... No reason to fix what isn't broken, I suppose. There are a bunch of beasts over here now, just chilling out. We'll, we'll leave them be. Honestly, the beasts don't seem to be bothering us all that much. <laughs> Perhaps it's a little bit telling that the beasts are sort of friendly here, and the humans are the opposite of that. Uh, how about that, huh? <laughs> Crows are still fucked up, as usual. 
So I mentioned this in the last episode, but uh, Bloodborne has this ongoing problem with enemy health versus your damage and all that stuff. Uh, and the DLC is where it starts to spiral out of control a little bit. Like, as I mentioned, Souls game DLCs usually amp up the enemy health and damage to, to sometimes quite ridiculous levels. But um, here, the old hunters takes it to an extreme that I, I don't know. I, I think it's a step over the line. Because, I mean, back in old Yarnum, these, these guys were kind of wimpy, right? Like, they, their gimmick, right, is that they crowd around you and then they attack you with, like, a death by a thousand cuts kind of thing. But now they do the same damage as these guys do. Also, hey, look, this, this guy has used the old hunter's bone, so he, he has the quick step thing going on. He, he's got the quickening. And he's nuts! He's crazy! He's got cool clothes, though. But yeah, this is this is where Bloodborne's problem with that starts to go kind of crazy. It's 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 not so bad that it ruins the game, but it it is kind of annoying, right? Where it's like I wish it was just a little bit easier. Just overall. Like not enough to not enough to spoil the challenge, but enough to make it so that like you have a little bit of breathing room. Ooh. No, thank you. A fun, a fun strategy for getting through this area quick is to uh, run straight up the stairs and trigger the boulder, which will kill everything that's following you because it does a lot of damage. <laughs> and hey, look, we have the entire old hunter set now. So let's put that on. I mean, why not, you know? It's new clothes. It's got good defense. It's got really good defense. So it's worth wearing. I'm not really a fan of the hat. No, you know what? I like the hat. It's just that I don't really wear... I don't really wear hats that often in this game. Oh my. Well, that's not good. Uh... Okay. My turn. Oh! God! Oh, that's bad. That's terrifying. Alright, so this isn't just a man. This is a Cthulhu man. This, this man is like... He, he's reminiscent of the Bed of Chaos. Oh, God. So these, these big-ass guys, they are a force to be reckoned with, they, but they're really cool. They are a really cool enemy with, like, a lot of fun attacks and, like, a crazy design and... Oh. As with the rest of this DLC, what a nightmare. Interesting thing about these guys is that they are wearing the Executioner garb. The... The suit that the the suit of armor that Alfred was wearing, which is kind of weird. I, I don't know why they're wearing the executioner clothes, but it's like a big, a big chufty version of that. It's pretty cool. And hey, look! Welcome back, everybody, to the Grand Cathedral. It's been some time since we've been here. Sorta. <laughs> but you know what they say, right? Looks can be deceiving. As we encounter the first boss of the DLC. I think I just saw it move.
It's agonizing, isn't it? The waiting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, he's not. It's fine. He's just gonna stay there. Hell of a fake out, though, isn't it? That was probably the most agonizing 20 seconds or so of your life. <laughs> I was debating, right? I was like, should I just jog up there? Should I, like, or should I just keep the ruse up? But, uh, but you know what? I'm glad that I didn't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll put some, like, creepy music. Maybe I'll put the choir music in the background while I'm walking up there and, like, have it get louder as I, as I walk up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, man. What a fun fake-out, though, right? I love it when these games do fake-outs like that, where you think, like, Oh, shit. This, this area was already hard, so this boss is gonna be crazy super hard. And then it's actually already dead, and you don't even need to fight it. What in the fuck? Oh my. That's not normal. None of that is normal. That's not normal at all. Oh god. And hey look! The, this this skeleton ow! The skeleton right here. It's the, the corpse of the amygdala who hangs out in front of Yahargul. Not even he survived whatever just happened to this place. Although I suppose saying that it just happened to this place is uh, perhaps a misnomer because I suppose we don't know how long the Hunter's Nightmare has been like this. Perhaps it's been like this since its inception, whenever that was. I suppose that's a question that's worth asking, though. Is the Hunter's Nightmare a part of the Nightmare Plane? Or is the Hunter's Nightmare an entirely separate Nightmare Plane? Because I'm a bit confused. Because that's the Grand Cathedral over there. But there's also another one over there. Which means that, technically, this area is two Cathedral Wards that have just been kind of like haphazardly slapped on top of each other. And I find it kind of funny. And I find it kind of sad. Well, I don't find it that sad. It's just a mystery. One that we're going to unravel together. In fact, you might notice that there are not really any... That there aren't any story bonus features in this one. Well, it's because the Hunter's Nightmare... The old Hunter's really drops you off at the deep end. And there is a story to be found here, and we'll get to it. But not yet. Because I'm a little bit more concerned with this guy who's trying to beat my ass with this giant hammer. I love this guy. He is so excited. He just screams and screams. That's great. Like, he is so excited to beat you up. <laughs> Whoever did the voice acting for these guys did a really good job. Of, of making them sound insane. <laughs> uh. And these these new Yarnum guys are interesting too, because they're wearing new clothes as well. Like, they've got like a weird, like, fancy dressing kind of outfit going on. Like, here, look at him. He's got like a weird, like, coat suit thing going on. And like a bag over his head. It's very strange. And of course there's a river of blood down there. Because, I mean, it's a nightmare. Of course there's a river of blood. And you can tell that this takes place directly in one of the nightmare planes, wherever that may be, because of these gravestones that are like split open and have veins and blood coming out of them. Ugh. And hey, you may recognize this spot. This spot's not even in Cathedral Ward. This is like, this is like a section of Central Yarnum that's just been like plopped down right on top. 
so it's it's so strange. I really like it. I, I really like the surreal feeling of this area. Because technically speaking, this is reused assets in a sense. But it's also not really. Because they're being used in such an interesting, unique way. And oh hey, it's this old guy again. Where's your blunderbuss, old man? Wait, what's that ticking? Ugh! I found out what the ticking was. It was an explosion. We just picked up our second weapon. The Boomhauer. I mean, Boomhammer. The Boomhammer is one of my favorite weapons in this game. Because it's just a giant hammer that you beat stuff up with that you can also make explode into fire when you hit things. What's not to love about that? It's so good. Interestingly, there is only one set of old hunter clothes, but there are two old hunter hats. This one's more of a top hat kind of thing, but uh, I don't know. Of the two hats, I think I prefer the first one. Although I suppose if you were being like a proper dapper gentleman kind of character, uh, the top hat would be superior. And of course, it's everybody's favorite enemy. Back again to ruin our lives once more. The, the Kanehurst flea tick things. But uh, in a moment, we'll, we'll see something that's kind of special about them. That uh, makes them significantly less annoying than the... Uh, than the previous ones. And hey, this is the shortcut that leads back to Gilbert's Lantern. Although Gilbert's not here. Or maybe he is here. Uh oh. Oh boy. Uh. I like this fight. This this fight is like a like an honest one-on-one -on -one fight with like a weird human-ish monster. Right? This hunter here is using the beast claw weapon, which we cannot obtain without going into the chalice dungeons. He is also using beast roar, in case you can't tell. You can shoot him while he's doing Beast Roar. I just did it there a second ago. You can shoot him while he's using Beast Roar to get an automatic parry on him. Uh, but he, he likes to dodge around a whole lot other than that. He does a lot of damage, too, with, with the Beast Claw. The Beast Claw is a really interesting weapon. And this guy having it is why I didn't do a weapon demo of it when, I, when it was first available to me to go get. Because uh, he's d he's demonstrating it for me pretty well here. Basically, it just uh, transforms and gives you a permanent beast blood pellet if you are using a specific rune, which he has on, that transforms you into a beast. It's um a little bit dangerous. He's a little bit a little bit of the dangerous type. This guy, but it's but it's a fun, unique encounter. God, just die already, jeez. Thank you. And you know, it's a missed opportunity, I feel, to to give you a badge that does not unlock the beast uh, the beast claws for you. It's a real shame. The the firing hammer badge allows you to buy some of the stuff that the enemies are using around here, like the the, the Molotovs that, that explode after a set time. But it doesn't allow you to buy the Beast Claw, which is a real shame. Although, interesting thing about the Firing Hammer badge is that it's another Powder Keg item. And it's in front of... It's in front of the house where Gilbert was staying. And Gilbert, of course, has caught the plague and is turning into a beast. With, I suppose, the implication there being that... that Gilbert was maybe not so truthful to us when he said that he was a fellow outsider. Perhaps he participated in the burning of Old Yarnum. Who knows? 
After all, he does give you the flame sprayer. So anyway, the fleas are back, and they're not so bad this time around. Their, their AI has been changed pretty significantly. Uh, now that they are fat, dumb, and happy, full of blood, uh, they move a lot slower, which really, really helps their AI not be such a pain, let's say, to be generous. There's a bunch of enemies over there, and I don't really want to fight any of them, so we're just going to head down the river for now. Now that these fleas are at least a little bit manageable to fight, we can uh, maybe try to be sneaky sneaky. Or not. You know how insects are. They have like a, they have like this innate sense of danger around them. Of course, they can still spit blood that poisons you. All the stuff that they could do back in Canhurst, they can still do. It's just, uh, now that they're not so hungry, they move a little slower. God, what an area, right? Like, look at, look at what we're, look at what's around us right now. We're just surrounded by a river of blood made from the drained husks of, like, charred corpses just laying everywhere in, like, about in piles. Oh, I I can't say I've ever had a nightmare like this, but I I can imagine that someone somewhere must have. Cause boy, what a nightmare it is. So this blood river, it it kind of forms like a like a like a scratch almost through the two areas. It's it's almost like Central Yarnum and Cathedral Ward have been stitched together, and this this blood river here forms the stitching. Because, because that exit out of um that exit out of Gilbert's lantern area usually leads to the Great Bridge. But the Great Bridge is not here. The the Great Bridge has kind of been mishmashed with the right side of the Grand Cathedral. And this is this is where things get a little bit confusing geography-wise, and is why this area is so interesting, I think, is, is because it's not just like we plopped one area on top of the other and now everything's fucked and weird. They put some thought into it. Cause that's the Great Bridge up there. You can tell by the uh, you can tell by the, the buttresses and like the weird like the weird platform coming off the side when I was looking up at it just now. And yet, it's it's a lot thinner so that it can join up properly with Cathedral War. And it's very strange and surreal. And I really, really enjoy it. Coming up here in this cave, we got some real bullshit. Because uh, here comes a hunter fight unlike any you've seen before. This motherfucker has a Gatling gun! He's got a Gatling gun, and he's got infinite bullets for it! This guy... is... I'm, tr I'm trying to not say crazy again. I've been saying crazy so many times in this episode. Because it's just so appropriate as a descriptor. This guy and his Gatling gun are just... Like... It's not that hard right? It's not, it's not such a problem of difficulty, it's just that the Gatling gun stun locks you and keeps you from dodging away. So if he manages to peg you down with it, you're screwed. You are screwed. It's such a nightmare. Like, all you can really hope to do with this guy is parry him and stay close to keep him from using the Gatling gun. Because like I said, a, a recurring problem you may have noticed with hunters in this game is that they have infinite bullets. And also, this guy has blood vials, and I think I don't think he manages to get off a heal, thankfully. But God, he's so tough. Oh, I'm just glad I focused on parrying him instead of trying to fight him the quote-unquote real way. Because if you let this guy back off a heal, he becomes even more of a pain in the ass. But hey, look, for our misery, the Gatling gun is ours. 
Unfortunately, though, I won't be able to use it because I don't have enough blood tinge, I believe. But man, the Gatling gun is great. I, I'm gonna have to do a bonus feature rundown on, like, guns. Because I haven't really shown off any of the guns, just the main hand weapons. So at some point, I'll do, like, a like an OK Corral shootout with all the guns, and it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. The problem with Jill is that uh, I've been focusing mainly on weapon stats, and I haven't really put any points into Arcane or Blood Tinge, other than to use certain equipment that I specifically planned for. So, it's, ki it's kind of an issue, because it's like, now I can't use half of the game's equipment. <laughs> oh, but that's the, that's the beauty of the bonus feature, is that I can show that stuff off. And hey, look, there's a Blood Starved Beast down here. Approximately where the Blood Starved Beast would be, underneath the Great Bridge. So how about that? I don't know why he's here, although I suppose this is where a Blood Starved Beast would find his home, considering there's blood. And so it's time for our rematch against this guy. This time I'm not going to use the strategy where I do the beast blood thing and just like cheese him to death. I mean, I think I have some blood cocktails, but I guess I might as well show an honest fight with this guy. Because I didn't, really, in the, in the Let's Play beforehand. Oh, maybe I am going to do it, actually. I don't know, I guess we'll see. Either way, this fight is quite a bit tougher than the, uh, than the one in Old Yarnum. Because he's, you know, you got a lot less room to maneuver around. And he is as tough as DLC enemies get, so... Um... Okay, that was a bad example, but generally speaking, they made him tougher to account for the DLC. <laughs> uh, so no, there's no boss fight in this episode, but this is close enough, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'll put the, maybe I'll put the music in the background for the Blood Starved Beast here. He's got a lot of health, I don't know if you noticed. So this, this is enough of a challenge. And there's really not, there's not really much point in doing this, because he won't follow you out of the cave. So, like, if you really want to, you can just grab what you came here for, and then run away. I don't even know if he gives good souls. I don't know, I think he's just here to teach, he's just here to make you go, oh shit. <laughs> Which, to be fair, he does. But, I mean, that's just kind of a property of the blood Beast, not this specific fight. It is a very, very intimidating enemy. Yeah, no, look at that. That's pathetic. <laughs> what a pathetic guy. That blood-starved beast. <laughs> Alright. Let's pick up what we came here for and get the hell out of here. It's the arm of an amygdala, which we can swing around like a hammer. <laughs> You know, they really took their opportunity to put in, like, more weird-ass, unique weapons, and I, I have to say, I really appreciate it. This... I love it when DLCs take advantage of everything they, they have for creativity. So that building I just looked at is where we came from. That's Odin Chapel over there. So we have almost made a complete circuit back into, uh, back into Odin Chapel, which is weird, because if you've been keeping track of our progress, we've kind of gone in a semi-circle. <laughs> Time and space are a little bit weird in the Hunter's Nightmare, because we, we haven't really gone far enough for it to complete a circuit, and yet, we're going to end up right back where we started at the Lantern. And there's this big-ass bridge full of enemies, and I, I don't feel like fighting any of them, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to make my great escape, why don't I? Because that is a... that is a bomb to be disarmed some other time. Oh, hey. You didn't aggro on me immediately. 
Can I help you, sir? You're a hunter with your sanity, aren't you? Must have taken a wrong turn then, eh? Well, we're more alike than you think. This is the hunter's nightmare. Where hunters end up when drunk with blood. You've seen them before. Aimless, wandering hunters slavering like beasts. This is what the poor fools have to look forward to. So, don't be brash. Turn back before it's too late. Unless you've something of an interest in nightmares. Oh, I mean, we came this far. No sense giving up now. I think. Oh, yes, I see. You sense a secret within the nightmare and cannot bear to leave it be. As if the spirit of Bergenworth lives on within you. Such inquisitive hunters will relish the nightmare. But beware. Secrets are secrets for a reason. And some do not wish to see them uncovered. Especially when the secrets are particularly unseemly. I see. Well, I'll keep that in mind, friend. Maybe we'll meet again some other time, and uh, you'll have a little bit more to say about these un unseemly secrets. And just like that, somehow, through the exit that usually leads to the elevator that goes to the upper cathedral, we made it back to the lantern. And now it's back to the dream. We actually don't have very much to do here right now. Um, I think I, I think I'll check out what the firing hammer badge gave us. Uh, we we can buy the DLC weapons now that we've picked them up in the main game. Uh, in case you sell it and want another copy sometime, I guess. But yeah, we can buy rope molotovs. Delayed Molotovs, Delayed Rope Molotovs, which return in Dark Souls 3, uh, and it's kind of weird. Just a bunch of weird PvP utility items. Although I suppose they would have some use in the main game as well. Hi there, doll. We'll, we'll talk to you in a minute. We, we've got a little bit of looking around to do first. As usual, I have to repair my weapons every time I come here. <laughs> uh, we're just going to check out the bass messengers, see if they've got anything new for us. And the answer is sort of. We, we can buy bloodstone trunks now. They are exorbitantly expensive. Holy crap, they're expensive. 20 insight. 20 insight is highway robbery. But the bloodstone chunks are very useful, especially if you don't feel like grinding for them, which I will never, ever do. You can't force me to grind Bloodborne, I won't do it. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? I desire some leveling very up. Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. So at this point, there's not really all that much I can do left for my stats. I'm, I'm mostly going to focus on pumping vitality, because as we proceed further in the DLC, I'm going to need it. Farewell, good hunter. Thanks. And with that, I think we're about done for the day. I'm going to have to stock up on blood vials pretty soon, but other than that, I'm ready to delve into the nightmare again. At this headstone, which becomes a fast travel point. So I'll see you next time, when we plunge further into the Hunter's Nightmare. It's Weapon Demonstration Bonanza Palooza! We picked up a bunch of new weapons in this episode, and we're going to pick up a bunch more in the next episode. So these next couple of weapon demos are going to be very, very dense. I hope you appreciate these, because I had to do an entire separate playthrough of the game all the way through to the end, including the DLC, just to pick these up and have the stats to wield all of them. First up, it's the Beast Cutter. 
Uh, we've already technically seen this weapon being used by the enemies in the DLC. Uh, some of the enemy hunters use the Beast Cutter, which is a big beaten stick that transforms into a big-ass whip-like cane. Of course, the Beast Cutter is the strength version of the threaded cane, uh, which, you know, I mean, it wasn't necessarily in high demand, but hey, you know, it's kind of cool. Uh, it also has a way, way higher range <laughs> because it is a is a big old beaten stick. So uh, if you are a strength character and you would like to use the threaded cane, well, hey, here you go. The threaded cane uh, excels at crowd management, let's say. Like, if you if you want a crowd to go away very fast, just draw all of their attention, and then the Beast Cutter will do its work. The Beast Cutter is, of course, one of the very first uh, prototype trick weapons, hence why it is just made out of stone like a like a caveman's club. It's... It's really interesting because it's it's very primitive, <laughs> uh, but it's it's fun that they let you use like prototype weapons and stuff. I really like that. It's it's a really cool idea. I really like the Beast Cutter. It's it's really really effective, and it is overall a very useful weapon. Next on the shopping list, we have one of my favorite weapons in the game, the Boomhauer. I mean, Boomhammer. The Boomhammer. The Boomhammer uh, is one of my one of my top one of my all-time favorite trick weapons because it's just a big old hammer that you smash stuff with. And the guy that was wielding it in the DLC episode was very, very excited to use it. And um, once I activate the trick mode, you'll see why. Uh, in its untransformed mode, um, the boom hammer is just a, a normal, uh, just a, a normal swing and hammer, wide range, low swings, pretty high damage. Uh, but this weapon was made by the powder kegs, and you're about to see why. You see, uh, hitting the transform button doesn't actually transform the boom hammer into something else. No, it makes the boom hammer explode on the next hit. So, um, it does pretty much all of the same moves, but now they all gain uh, a really, really big-ass fire explosion AoE thing, and, uh, it's really good against groups. <laughs> but that's not all. It's not just for the charge attacks. You can also do fire sweeps, you, you, you can augment your R1 in the middle of a combo. It's, it's really great, because... The boom hammer is a very versatile weapon. Like you, you can buff it like in the middle of a combo and then continue the combo. It it has like special uh, transforming moves that allow it to transform without using very much stamina, so that you can attack the same number of times while also buffing it. It's it's so cool. I, l I love this weapon so much, and it looks so cool too. Really, really great weapon. But I would be remiss if I did not cover one of the one of the weirdest weapons in the game by comparison. The amygdalan arm, which is indeed the arm of a small amygdala. A small one. <laughs> uh, it looks like a it looks a little bit like a chicken leg. <laughs> Uh, the amygdala arm is another club. Uh, untransformed, it, it has basically no attacks, really. All, all of its attacks are just big, giant slams. That's really all it does when it's untransformed. I, I don't think it has any untransformed attacks other than, like, this big-ass, like, BAT! BAT! Like, I, I don't think it does anything else. But when it's transformed, however, it comes alive. <laughs> Which is weird. It's so strange, but it's awesome. It it turns into like a vine whippy thing that that goes like whoop 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 whoop. Oh god, it's such a strange weapon, but it's so cool and it's it's useful in a lot of situations. Like the untransformed mode is really good against single opponents, and then the transform mode has a bunch of attacks that are focused on like 
crowd control. Like if you if you just tap, if you just tap the the charge attack button, it'll like it'll it'll whip back and forth and it'll keep going as long as you have stamina. Like this game does not do attacks that have infinite chain combos very often, presumably to prevent you from like you know, just stun locking something until it's dead. But the amygdalin arm kind of breaks this rule by having this weird fingernail thing. Look at it, there it goes. It's so strange, but it's so, like, effective. It's, it's such a weirdly effective weapon, and I really, really like it. So those are the three weapons we picked up in, in this episode. And I look forward to experiencing the rest of the million billion weapons in Bloodborne's DLC.